This is WCN. The Whole Care Network. You talk. We listen. Content presented on the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed during this podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent views of the Whole Care Network. Always consult your physician for medical and fitness advice, and always consult your attorney for legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. Have you ever met anybody that has caregiving on their bucket list of things to do in life? Beyond caregiving, how do we care? We also have to care for ourselves. How do we treat friends, family, strangers we meet? Ah, oh, forget it. How do we heal the physical, social, financial, spiritual? Hello. Creating healing ties. Tying it all together like a bow tie. With your host, Christopher McClellan, the bow tie guy. Well, greetings, everyone. It is Christopher McClellan. You might know me as the bow tie guy for another episode of Healing Ties 2.0 featured on the Whole Care Network. As you know, we're in the middle. Well, we're not in the middle. We're towards the end of our 30 podcasts in 30 days. In fact, this is episode 28, if I can count the 30. Yeah, episode 28, so 29 and 30 is coming on Monday. But we are um, doing these episodes to support National Family Caregivers Month and to kind of tickle our listeners about our new uh, Whole Care Network website, which we'll be, be debuting hopefully on December 1st, but you know about technology. You never know, but uh, that's what we're gearing towards. And But you can get a sneak preview of our new website by going to our old website, thewholecarenetwork.com. You'll see the link immediately on the front page. And then when you get to the new site, you'll meet a person by the name of Bo. That's because Bo ties things together on the Whole Care Network. I'm sure as soon as you get a look at Bo, you're going to get it 100%. And we're asking all of our listeners to provide us some feedback on the new site because we want to build a site that works for you. One of the special features on the new site is all the content will be searchable by our four pillars of care, our physical health, our spiritual health, our financial health, and our emotional health. All blogs, all podcasts, all videos, will be categorized in one or all four of those um, pillars. So it's kind of a unique way to to, uh, sort out content, but we're going to give it a try. And be on the lookout for some new exciting things happening with the Whole Care Network in 2021, including a live 24-7 streaming radio channel and our new YouTube channel, which will feature live healing tie shows. We're kind of going big time here on the whole care network, but you know, enough of me. I've been looking forward to meeting my guest today, Suzanne White, who is the founder of the caregiver warrior. She was blessed with the opportunity to care for her parents and ventured out on a caregiving journey that would change her life. She blogs about this journey on her website, caregiverwarrior.com and shares her experience, strengths, and hopes with others so that they too may survive caregiving with grace and empowerment. Suzanne, welcome to Healing Ties. It's we finally get an opportunity to meet each other. This is terrific. I know it's so wonderful. It's Chris the Bowtie Guy. How are you? <laughs> We're doing great here in Florida. You know, and I, I I have to say I didn't I'm not sure where you're where are you located. I am in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Brooklyn, New York. You know, my <laughs> my partner Richard was born in 
Raised in Brooklyn. Mm. Yeah. He's a real Brooklyn. I'm a he's Jersey a girl. Real, oh, goodness. He, <laughs> so it's he, wonderful that he's a real Brooklynite. He was a real Brooklynite. So if you haven't had a chance to read our story or see the video, he's still, even into his 82nd year, he still had his Brooklyn accent. But <laughs> Oh, that's great. He deserves that Brooklyn accent. <laughs> if you have it, you Brooklyn. deserve it. I think I have a little bit of it, too. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, yeah, just a little bit. But my, this, is, this makes it even more special. But, you know, we've been... We've been following each other for a long time on social media. Years. We, you know, we're aware of each other's work. I've admired you from afar. And now I get the opportunity to talk with you. I know a little bit about you and your work. I love the being, I love the warrior tag, but let our listeners know a little bit about you and why you're doing what you're doing. And we're going to get into a little bit of chat about the caregiver warrior. Excellent, excellent. I love, as you know, I love to hear myself talk. So I, I just say I love this opportunity. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, and I love that you love the warrior, the warrior tag that I I put to caregiving because I I just believe that you know as caregivers all know we are fighting every day for our loved ones. You know, and I look at the battlefields as healthcare and medical crisis and medications and emotional states. And I just think that warriors are kind of born with this chip to take care of others and serve others. And caregivers most certainly are warriors. So I guess why I really kind of support caregivers and, and their trials and, and how, they, how they meet their challenges of everyday life. And I think that's one of the reasons why we all connect with one another, even though we may not know each other personally, per se, we understand the stories and the experiences, which brings us to an immediate connection. Absolutely. I mean, we're all so different. We're all so unique, but we all are on the same journey. I feel like there's this big road <laughs> that we walk down, you know, and I think it's wonderful when we can connect with each other and hear each other's stories because that's, I mean, that's where the empowerment is and the grace. I mean, it's that we can share with each other and not feel alone. I know right. that, uh, you know, I, so often I, I, was fortunate in that I knew at some point during my caregiving journey with my parents that I had to take care of myself and I always wanted to ride horses. So I, you know, angels spoke to me and I found this barn right near my parents' house and I would go every Sunday morning, no matter what. And it ended up being, we were all taking care of someone. Everybody I rode with for that hour on Sunday, we were all caregivers. And I, if I heard once, I heard it 14 times. They don't tell you about this. They don't tell you this. You know, and I mean, and that's and I and that's what caused me to say to myself, if at some point I have to share what I'm learning and the mistakes I'm making with other right. people, so that caregivers can get some relief, because it is, it's very confusing. Even though it's kind of all the same journey, it's very, very different challenges all the time. Exactly, because everybody's lives are different, uh, but caregiving, and I, I know this is kind of repetitive for my listeners, but you know, caregiving happens because of one or two things, an unfortunate accident or an untimely di diagnosis, and suddenly you're thrust into this role. And the role plays out differently for everybody, but there's so, a lot of similarities uh, that mm -hmm. take place as well. Absolutely. I mean, and, and talk about being thrown into it. You know, my parents, my dad was a World War II bombardier pilot, very stoic um, okay. guy. You know, he was a real hero. And my mom was this little sort of Irish Catholic fireball. And, they, <laughs> and she began to have the beginning signs of dementia, but they hid it from us as a uh, team. They worked together, you know, to kind of hide uh, it. And I understand that now in hindsight, I, I understand mm -hmm. that. And that's kind of another conversation. But, and we all were, we would all spend the holidays in Florida with at my sister's house. And we would all, you know, cause my dad and mom and I were all on the East coast and we would all fly to Florida and we would fly separately. And my sister called me one holiday season and said they had to take daddy off the plane. He was so sick. They took him off in a wheelchair. And we were like, mm -hmm. what? I mean, this is a guy who flew airplane. I mean, you know, yeah. so, and that's, it was, they were hiding it. And we, because he got sick and he basically had caregiver burnout. I mean, he had other heart issues, but sure. he basically, it was, it was in the middle of, of caregiver burnout. And then I was able to say, see and say, Hey pop, do you want help? And he said, yes. So quickly I was like, there we go. And then I was off and running, never expecting to do that. Cause in your mind, you know, the, your loved ones 
are always going to be okay. Right. They're, it's all, they're, they always get better. Everybody gets better. They we can always, always get fix better. everything. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I was one of those sort of like Friday, I was okay. Saturday, I was a caregiver. So, and I think that's a very important thing to talk about because, of course, with my type A personality and, and my control freak, as a control <laughs> freak, I was going to do it all. I was going to do it all by myself and I was going to fix everything right away. Oh, so you've got one of those caregiving capes that can do everything. Oh, yeah. You just oh, snap Woman. that cape and then it, everything everything <laughs> happens. And I took that cape and then I flew into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and you flew into a wall. And that's another, yeah, and that's something that everybody, you know, every, every caregiver experiences. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. again, I know we're just talking for the first time, but, you know, the one, another one of my pet phrases has been, you know, asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. But asking for that help first time is very, very hard. It's extraordinarily hard. And it's it's a finesse, you know, you have to really you have to really learn how to ask for help for so many of us. Right. Because it takes a village. Caregiving takes a village, period. I mean there's there's mm-hmm. there's no exceptions to that rule. I think mm-hmm. that's one of the things that we're all we all have in common. Um but you know, for someone like me asking for help, I mean it's not even something it's not a it's not something that I plan, but I have a very difficult my personality, I do everything by, I'm the go-getter. I'm the one that fixes everything. And mm-hmm. it's very difficult for me to even ask for help. I didn't even know how to do it, really. Yeah, it is it is a skill that you, ha- yet you have to learn over time. And then, and part of that skill is uh, realizing that it's, it's okay. It's not a, it doesn't mean that you're not the best caregiver. It just means that you're not the only caregiver. Oh, that's, I love that. That's, that is so brilliant because there is this thing that happens for us where if we have to, if we can't do it by ourselves and we can't do it all and we can't fix everything, that means that we are a bad caregiver. I mean, there's this crazy thing that we make up in our minds, this bad dialogue, and it's just Mm -hmm. simply not true. You know, it's just, we're not the only caregiver and we deserve a break today. I like that. We deserve a break today. I've heard that somewhere, but I, my, yeah. <laughs> we do deserve a break today. And you know, one of the things that uh, you're doing so, so much tremendous work, but, but there's seven things that I want to talk to you about today. Sure. That you really hit right on the nail, put the nail on the head with your ebook, the seven fail safe tips for caregivers. Oh, and thank you. like number one, let your, let yourself adjust to the caregiving role. I mean, it happens suddenly. You're not expected to know everything the first day. There is an adjustment. There's a, such a big adjustment. And like I said, I, I ran into it thinking I could do it all myself and do it all at once. And you do, you need to, you need to breathe. Everybody needs to breathe. My parents needed to breathe around me right. jumping in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not just the caregiver, but those that we care for. We all need a period to sort of adjust, to slow down. Yes, I've accepted this responsibility. Now let me just see the lay of the land. I don't have to do everything at once, you know. And it kind of goes in line with some of the other things that you've written about, you know, self-awareness. When right. you have that self-awareness of what what's transpiring in front of you, then adjusting to your role can be a little bit easier. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight because it doesn't, right. but that's why we do these podcasts and we do these blogs and we share our experiences because we hope that if it can just connect with one caregiver that's coming after us, then we know that we're doing our, we know that we're doing our job. Absolutely. I mean, that's the goal, one caregiver at a time. And that self-awareness is for me, that's, that's the foundation you build the, the caregiving house on is mm-hmm. self-awareness. I mean, if, I had to learn a lot of things about myself, not only about my parents and their needs and their health, but I had to learn a lot about me right. to be self-aware of what I was going through and what I was doing so I could make the adjustments and make the entire process easier. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's almost like having uh, two relationships in one. You have that pre-established relationship with, in this case, with your parents, and then this caregiving relationship comes in and it it is a different relationship. It's a different set of responsibilities and it's a different 
skill set as well, trying to separate the two when it's next to impossible to do that. It really is. And that's a big pillar of my self-awareness because my mom and I did not get along. I mean, we were just, we were very similar, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is part of my self-awareness. Uh, um, very good. Very, very similar. And, um, you know, there was just a lot of history there. And my mom, you know, my mom had dementia, so she couldn't, I mean, she couldn't change. I couldn't mm-hmm. ask her to change. So if our relationship was going to heal or get better, I had to change. And the only way to make that change is the self-awareness to really say to myself, like, why am I getting so annoyed now? Or why mm-hmm. am I so scared now? You know, what's really going on for me? And right. how, how can I be aware of that and kind of work on that on my end so that my behavior would change so then the relationship with my mom would change? And that leads directly into your second tip, which is to take care of yourself. But the caregivers are notorious for uh, uh, avoiding their own self-care. And, and actually, self-care is job number one for every caregiver. And, and why is that? It's just so, it's some of the most self, selfless people in the world who will care, turn themselves inside out to care for others, completely ignore themselves. So I mean, it's, it's a strange thing that most of us, 98% of caregivers have. Yeah. If I get sick, who's going to take care of them? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got to take care of myself. My, and, and I love you, you know, the emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically. I mean, they all fall apart. Ah, it's they just, all fall apart. Because your absolutely your attention is to somebody else, and it's not uh, it's not to yourself, and it's right. it's not selfish. It's just something that you have to adjust to. Right. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous it, if you don't take care of so. yourself. Yeah. I mean, it can really be dangerous. Yeah. And we already we've already touched on your third tip, asking for help. So we've we've got that covered, and we we both know that it's a uh, it's a sign of strength when you ask for help, but it's not absolutely. easy. But you hit on the, your, your fourth tip, compassionate. You know, I'm a strong believer that uh, there's no greater honor that can be bestowed on another person than the care, be entrusted with somebody else's care, especially at end of life. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's, uh, it's not have peaks and valleys. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's, you know, and, it's, and depending on what your relationship is and, and how tired you are, there's, there's a big soup of emotion, um, especially at end of life. And I think compassion and empathy, I think, I think the two of them, although different, they're very similar. And I think right. that for me, the big, there was a big light bulb that went off for me when I saw my mom one day, and I had, we had a big calendar in front of the refrigerator, um, that, you know, she could see all her doctor's appointments and I saw, and I'm going to start to cry, but I saw the poor little thing like pointing to a square on like one date. And I could just tell she couldn't get it. She mm-hmm. had no clue what was what was written there. She couldn't make, and she just had this look on her face. And it was heartbreaking. My heart broke, but mm-hmm. it just it just opened my heart to have such extraordinary empathy and compassion for her. It changed the whole right. game for me right then and there. Not that I wasn't compassionate or empathetic before, because I think I'm a very kind person. But it just made me see that she was in this world. And she was so frightened. And, you know, no matter what she did or what she said, I had to be patient and, and loving and kind and soft. You know, one of the one of the lessons I learned in the midst of taking care of Richard, uh, I learned so much from him. <laughs> and I miss him quite a bit, even after six oh, years. But, uh, you know, he said to me one day, it was after it was after an argument and Actually, this argument was just six weeks before he died. Uh, he said, you know, Chris, some days it's the disease talking, not me. Brilliant. And uh, it stopped me in my track because he had, on his own, decided he, w- he didn't want to take his pain medicine for a couple of days. Well, there's a story beyond that story as well. But uh, uh, after the, the disagreement or the heated discussion. We didn't mm-hmm. talk for a couple of days. And then when we reconciled, that's, you know, he just looked me in the eye and he said, eh, some days it's the disease talking. And when you shared that story about your mom, 
you know, it reminds me of what our roles are as an advocate, that we're not the ones taking the medicine, we're not the ones going to radiation, we're not the we're not the ones with the diagnosis where there is the co-pilot. And when we can see it from their shoes, like you so beautifully described with your mom, mm -hmm. I'm, about really, cry on, I'm about to cry yeah. on this, but it, uh, it, it resonates. That's why these stories resonate with so many people because they're in our shoes. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it, it's quite amazing. I had a, my dearest friend who I, grew up with basically it was in, from 18 on she had lupus and mm. um i mean talk about a strong brawl but she she i said to her once during this whole month caregiving thing i said you know i'd like to really talk to you as, as the person who's being cared for um you know and get your view and she's oh i've got an earful for you <laughs> like, oh lini <laughs> but you know and she did she and she uh, which mm. is why i loved her all my life and I miss her, you know, is, is that, you know, she said, you know, sometimes you just, you know, there's, there's this helicopter flying around you and you just need to breathe and be sick or be, right. or just, you, you just need sometimes for everybody to back off you and just try to understand that it's a crappy day and we're in crappy moods and that's okay, you know, and, and I, it was good for me, you know, it, it mm -hmm. helped me, you know, to hear her story right. as someone who's being cared for, you know, but I, I, I love that sometimes it's the disease. I mean, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. yeah, he had wisdom beyond his, well, well, that's a whole, that's for a whole other, a whole yeah. other we're talking about Ultra, you today. Yeah. So, yeah, but, okay. uh, yeah. so your tip number five, I'm going to change it just a little bit. I'm going to kind sure. of do the reverse. Uh, are you good at juggling? Yes. Yeah. So, but. Can you juggle and just do the task at hand? Hmm. Well, let's see. I can juggle before I do the task at hand. <laughs> there you go. And you can pick what, then, you can, after you juggle, you can decide which task is the, is the most important. But that, exactly. But right. Do the task at hand. I mean, it's so right. appropriate. But, yeah. you know, you got to first you got to figure out which one. Is the, you got to figure out which one. And sometimes when you can't figure out, just pick one. Just pick <laughs> you know one. what I mean? Yeah, and that, and that, that you just got to pick it. You know, you you and do it, and then you move on to number six, and then after you do that task, you realize, you know what, I've done enough already. It's okay. Those other juggles that I was trying to maneuver, if I didn't pick it the first today, I, I'm sure they're going to be there tomorrow, or there'll be something different. I, absolutely, it's like, you know, there's not a race. I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, obviously, right. if there's a critical situation, but I mean, you know, who's putting the goal? I mean, who's writing our goals? I mean, it's like, right. you know, you show up, you know, showing up is like doing the task at the first one. You know, yeah. we show up, we do the best we can. It all gets done. You know, there's it, no it, rule book. It eventually, it does get done. Absolutely. It, it gets done in the time that it's supposed to get done. Right. Right. Absolutely. And then you talk about the caregiving blues. Mm. Expand well, on that a little bit for me, because I, I might have an antidote, but I want to oh, hear from oh, you Oh, excellent. Oh, that mm -hmm. would be wonderful. Because mm -hmm. I, listen, I, look, I think we are, I think all of us, I am of the belief that we're all doing the best we can. We're showing yes. up, most of us, showing and up doing my doing the best we can. It may not work for other people around us or, you know, not everyone may agree with us, but the bottom line of it is we're all doing the best we can. Having said that, there's times that I just felt like I couldn't go on or, I mean, you know, I got depressed. I got really sad. I had pre-grief. I, I just, I, I was, everything would kind of start to tumble a little bit and I would find myself with the caregiver blues. And I think the most important thing I learned about it was that you, it's okay to get the caregiver blues. It's okay to get down. It's mm -hmm. okay. And I think just acknowledging and being self-aware and saying, this is how I feel now. It's okay. It's okay to own your feelings. Yes. And it it's is. okay to share them. Mm -hmm. with a like-minded person who gets it. Yes. I think it's important to share them. 
it's, a like-minded it, yeah, person. Whatever your outlet is, uh, whether yeah. it's blogging or writing or talking to a friend, what whatever you you, you have to have an outlet. Absolutely, it's uh, you know it's like you know you don't want to stay in your own head because it's like being in a really bad neighborhood like all alone. <laughs> you know that's right, so, and then your hair, yeah. then you lose your hair. Yeah, oh, then you lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> or your hair changes from the top to the to your. Uh, but this is radio, so people can't see where my how my hair is shifted until they <laughs> to look at the profile. But no, it's uh, and you know my 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 antidote to this is that, um, and I I know you're going to get this. You know, for me it was blogging, progressed down the road into podcasting and, uh, and other things, but. You know, for me, the blogging was cathartic, especially after caregiving ends, because I can go back and I can relive the experience on the days that I need to do or if I want to do. And then I come to the realization that the good days far outweighed the bad days. It's just that the bad days, when they came about, they were more intense. And when you're in the middle of it, you're thinking about the bad days. But I can guarantee to all our listeners out there, uh, you know, as I as I'm shifting my conversation to healing ties to life after caregiving and how do we heal, having that outlet to go back and look at what you've done and the the grace filled experience that you've had, even those difficult days aren't going to be as bad because you showed up, like you said. Absolutely. I think that's, I think it's so beautifully put because I, I think until you just said that, I didn't really think, I mean, I get it right away, but I never thought of it that way. But when you're in the midst of it, sometimes the only things you can really see are the bad days because it's just, it, it's so <laughs> it's intense. Like... I mean, it's, oh my God, it's, it's just so intense. But the amazing thing, especially after it's finished, is that you you can't really remember the bad day. I mean, you can, but it's those moments that the, the beautiful moments, like the hug that my dad gave me one day uh -huh. told me how wonderful I was, or my mom saying to me, Oh, you always took care of me and you always did everything or the smile or the laugh. It's amazing to me that when I think of my mom now, and I'm telling you, my mom was tough and she could be so mean. I don't think of her that way. I right. can't even find a memory anymore. Right. I just think of her and all the good things she taught me and all the good things we had. Exactly. It's if they're so there, it's, they're prevalent. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So I, yeah. I think that, you know, it's a good thing to say to yourself in the midst of sort of these blues is that, you know, this too shall pass and that this is this is temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Caregiving is temporary. It could yeah. go for ten years, it could go for three days. Yeah. yeah. It's temporary. And yeah. it's our duty instead to, to, to help the person entrusted with your care yeah. go through it. And that's why you're a caregiver warrior. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. How do you like it, that? I love that. Okay. I love that. <laughs> okay. Perfect well, Suzanne, time. Maybe <laughs> very good. So you know, <laughs> this is a, this sound, seems like a perfect time for us to take our break. Now, you know, Suzanne, doing this with all of our guests on our, in our break, I'm 30 and 30 podcast. Uh, we want to know a fun fact about you that you may not have shared uh, today so far, or I don't know about you, but I know our guests are going to want to know a fun fact about Suzanne White. So put your thinking caps on. Jokey. Okay. So you're listening to Healing Ties on the Whole Care Network. We will be right back. Tomorrow on Healing Ties 2.0. I'm a problem solver. So in trying to find, you know, how do I fix this? But there is no fixing. There's no fix. And in no. trying to, but in, in my quest of trying to find, well, what can I do? How do I do this better? What can I do in this situation? I would find all of these people. All of these people were out there and everybody was in that same, oh my God, what do I do? That's when I found daughterhood in looking for resources. And 
then I saw that they had these circles and I thought, well, oh, I'm not doing a support group. Who, I, I, I've never done a support group. What's that? Right. Isn't that embarrassing? How do you do that? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk out of school. Right, Chris? Like, I'm not going to say anything. Right. You know, I, it. <laughs> I, get it. I, I, I can't it. say that, I, right. you know. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Roseanne Corcoran, in-home caregiver, primary caregiver, sandwich generation caregiver, host of Daughterhood, the podcast and a Daughterhood Circle Leader. Join me tomorrow when I talk with Chris McClellan, my brother from another mother, about all things caregiving. Join us tomorrow and every day in November for 30 shows in 30 days. Healing Ties 2.0, available at thewholecarenetwork.com slash healing ties and wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Welcome back, everybody. I am continuing my delightful conversation with the caregiver warrior, Suzanne White. Suzanne, it's your time in the spotlight. We want to know. my time in the spotlight. We want to know. Well, there could be a spotlight on radio, but I guess we'll we'll figure it out one way or another. But uh, but, uh, yeah, this is your thing. We want to know that one fun fact about you that uh, we're just kind of itching on the edge of our seat. So what... Pray tell, what is it? Well, it's very interesting because I would never normally tell this fun fact, but I just have a feeling you're going to appreciate this. When I was younger, I was a singer-songwriter and spent quite a few years in the music business. Oh. So there was a spotlight on me. Mm-hmm. And one of my most favorite memories is that because I was a kid and I sang my way through college and I would open up for all the acts in Philadelphia at a place called The Main Point. And we actually did a gig at Villanova, and the opening act was Bruce Springsteen. And he was oh, young. The boss. And the boss. And he was young and just starting out, and nobody came to see either of us. <laughs> we, we didn't have any people because <laughs> nobody knew any of us. <laughs> so we sat and hung out all night and, and jammed, and then that was it. <laughs> well, that is a terrific fun fact. You hung out with the boss. I hung out with the boss. Yeah. Who knew then? You know, I mean, I knew actually. I knew, I knew how wonderful I, I could see. But yeah, nobody came to see because we were just starting out, and who knew we were just the two kids? And there you go. You know, That's a fun fact. It's, it's funny. I, I I love his music, and you know, when you see him, I, you know, I don't. I've never met him, but you just know that he's a good guy. Yeah. There's yeah. just there's just something about him. Yes. And then you know, I get to talk to somebody like you, and I know that. You're a good gal because of all the work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. And so are you, all the work that you're doing. It's just, it's making it a safer place for caregivers. And I, I think that that's, the, I think the same kind of honor and celebratory work that we do as caregivers to make other caregivers feel safe. So thank you for oh, your work. Well, thank you. And, you know, everything that I'm doing in my life after caregiving is dedicated to uh, Richard Schiffer, my partner, and uh, keeps me going. And it's, uh, as I've learned from my friends, advocacy does heal us. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Two words never spoken. Well, thank you. And, you know, Suzanne, we just have a couple of minutes left. I, I have a strange sensation that we're going to be doing a few more of these because I, at least I sense that we've really connected here. <laughs> This has been we fun, have, but uh, we have. yeah, but please let our listeners know uh, how they can get in touch with you and how they can receive your free ebook from your website. Please have them come to caregiverwarrior.com. Um, I'm blogging there and put down a lot of my thoughts and tips and mistakes I made. Come learn from me and my mistakes at caregiverwarrior.com. And you can also see me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, all Caregiver Warrior. And um, I look forward to your feedback and any comments and anything I can help you with. Well, you know, Suzanne, with the uh, work that you're doing, 
the stories that you're sharing, you are certainly someone who's creating healing ties all around us. I can't thank you enough for joining me today. It's my pleasure. This has been a delight. And I'm very grateful that I did after Thanksgiving because now I have nothing, something else to be grateful for, which is you. I appreciate that. Goodness gracious. St. Ignatius, thank you for that. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Well, that that does it for this episode of Healing Ties. As you know, I'm your host, Christopher McClellan. You might know me as the Bowtie Guy. I've created A Life to Love After Caregiving Ends by sharing stories and resources and being with awesome people like Suzanne White. Healing Ties is produced in the posh downtown studios of Odd Bach Production in St. Louis, Missouri, and is a part of the Whole Care Network. Check out our soft launch of our new Whole Care Network website where you get a chance to meet Bo. You're going to love Bo because he ties things together on the Whole Care Network. And be sure to subscribe to Healing Ties wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We'll see you for another episode of Healing Ties, well, uh, tomorrow as we continue with our 30 podcast in 30 days celebrating National Family Caregivers Month. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye for now. This is WCN, the Whole Care Network. You talk, we listen.